How you doing today? It's uh, Rob Marriott from 123network.net and anything you don't hear or see in the video today and you would like to know or have any questions or comments please feel free to contact me at 123network.net go to the contact page up here and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Okay uh, now this will be cPanel tutorial part 5 as you've seen in my previous videos, I went through the preferences in part 1, mail in part 2, files in part 3, logs in part 4, and now we're on part 5, which is the security. Okay, first we're going to be going over the password protect directories uh, section there. Uh, in this section here, uh, this option will allow you to set a username and a password to access a uh, a particular folder or uh, a URL or folders from the web. Uh, this could be good when you need to uh, limit access to a certain part of your site due to say maintenance, uh, age requirements, member requirements say, such as advanced members so on and so forth. Uh, just an example uh, say if somebody went to your website typed in your website uh, if you want to password protect your website as well, you can, your whole main website. Uh, when people go to it, it'll prompt them with a, a box uh, asking for a username and a password. So basically, this is what this uh, password protect directories does. It allows you to uh, put a password on any of your directories from the web uh, so users cannot access them. Um, it's fairly easy to set up, simple, that's why I didn't click it, just to show you. It'll ask you if you want to do it for a subdomain or your domain, you go ahead and go in and you'll create your user. It's fairly simple. Uh, so next we got the IP Deny Manager and what this feature here will be for is if you're having trouble, spammers, uh, people you don't want to access your website uh, for a certain reason, uh, use this feature to block uh, a different range of IPs um, access in your site if you have the IP you can put the IP in there add the IP and it'll block it from accessing your website as well as uh, as you see here you can stop a domain you can put in the actual domain name and stop traffic from the domain uh, coming to your site that way you can have no traffic from that domain coming to your site if you don't want it um, now next uh, the next section we'll be going through here would be the uh, hotlink protection. So hotlink protection. Now what hotlink protection does is uh, it prevents your websites uh, from people stealing or linking uh, the images on your site or the links on your site uh, to their site. Uh, or from one site to another. So basically, uh, as a quick example here, uh, I, I don't really need to go through and show you this. Uh, I don't really have it set up as it's not really too important for me at the moment. But just as a, an example, um, would be say someone coming to your site and liking your header, the image that you use in your header, maybe this logo up here, the header. Um, say they like that header and they uh, right click and use copy image location and say they use the image tags on their website or another site or a form and used your image in the image tags that would be causing you extra bandwidth so uh, what this here uh, hotlink protection does is it allows you to enable it and only add sites that you prefer to uh, link to your links and your images. Uh, if this, if you don't uh, add the site, then nobody will be able to steal your images. Therefore, they won't be able to cause you extra bandwidth. So it's up to you if you want to use this here feature or not. Personally, I don't use it. Um, like I said, it's up to you. But it is a good feature. Um, now, uh, leech protect. Uh, basically what this does here is uh, it allows you to uh, set up uh, password protection uh, like say to prevent users from giving out 
or posting their passwords publicly. Uh, basically, you just use this feature here to send emails or lock an account if the user failed to log in uh, at several attempts. They'll receive an email saying so, and uh, there, you can lock their email for a number of hours. You can choose the hours. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward. Um, and the last feature we have there is the GNUPG keys. Now, um, it's up to you whether if you want to use this or not. Uh, myself, I don't use it, but if you want to use it, what this feature allows you to do is to encrypt data meaning any of the data you send is encrypted and it can only be decoded with your GNUPG private key. Now uh, what this means is basically you can provide your public key that it gives you for others to encrypt information to it and send it back to you. Um, and with this it only allows you to be able to decrypt the information with your own private GNUPG key. So uh, it's a pretty good feature as well if you want to keep things nice and private. Uh, this feature is for you. And that would be it for our security feature uh, in the DC panel tutorial part 5 of part 9. If you have any more questions, like I said, please feel free to contact us at 123network.net. Thank you very much and have a nice day.